Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a watch me work. I did this really pretty pale pink lacy kind of vibe. I think it's perfect for spring. I absolutely love this very simplistic look. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, we are removing my old set. This is my favorite removal bit. It is a carbide bit. The barrel is a little bit rounded on the top. It's a fine carbide bit. It's by Panna. It's my favorite removal bit. I am just kind of debulking the nail so that I am able to fill. I think these nails are about like two weeks grown out. This is, I believe it's Baby Cakes by Cocoist and Nail Thoughts. So the builder gel is that kind of pale pinky color. So I'm just taking that down. I do have a little bit of clear builder underneath that. So I'm really just focusing on debulking the nail. There will be a little bit of pink left. So that's always the first thing I do whenever I'm doing a fill. I use my carbide bit first, remove the bulk of the product, and then I will switch over to a sanding band. I primarily, almost exclusively use 240 grit sanding bands. And then I will kind of continue to smooth out the surface of the nail, but the biggest purpose of this is to get around the sidewalls and the cuticle because I don't like to get too close to the natural nail with a, a carbide bit running at 35,000 RPMs. So I will take a sanding band, run it usually about 10,000 RPMs and um, kind of smooth down that ledge, that ridge that's kind of grown out and remove any gel polish that's left over as well on the cuticles and sidewalls. Then I'm gonna grab my pusher, my metal pusher, and just do a nice little dry push on all of my cuticles, a little bit of scraping, get it all up off the nail plate. This really does make the next step of the dry manicure much easier. I'm gonna grab my favorite cuticle bit, itty bitty little football bit. It's running in reverse. I will flip up the skirt, the base of the cuticle. And then very lightly drag the bit down the right side wall. This is the most important step, in my opinion, of doing nails in general. If you're having lifting issues, the first thing that you should tackle is your prep. Making sure that all that dead cuticle tissue is up and off of the nail plate because it is kind of like slippy, sticky kind of texture. So when you're putting gel or even acrylic on top of that, dead cuticle tissue, it will cause lifting. It, it does not want to stick. So I want all of that off of my nail plate to help increase adhesion, increase longevity. And in my opinion, I just think it looks a lot nicer. It looks a lot more seamless, a lot more clean. This is my favorite step. It's, I think it feels good. I've had clients tell me that it feels good, the nice exfoliation. I am going to flip my e-file in the forward direction and lightly drag the bit along the left side of the sidewall. Now, the reverse and forward, this is because I am a righty. If you are a lefty, you're gonna switch. You're gonna start in forward, and then you'll end in reverse. Now I am grabbing a cylinder bit from Panna as well. It is a diamond bit and it's just a nice thin barrel that has like a, you know, a rounded safety on the edge of it. And I just drag that along the cuticle and I think it really just kind of softens everything. Helps continue to open up that cuticle area so that you're able to get your gel really nice and tight up in there. I think this step really just helps make everything look a lot more seamless and I'm exfoliating, you know, any of that dead skin. And for this one, I actually started in reverse, went along the left side and then I switched to forward and went along the right side. Few fingers still have a little bit of dead skin 
flapping up in the wind, so I just grab my nippers and gently nip those away. Then we'll move on to the fill. I am using the Model 1's dehydrator. Switching over to my primer. This is my favorite primer. It's an acid primer. You gotta be careful with it. Do not touch the skin. It will feel nice and burny, stingy, so make sure you're keeping it on the nail plate. This is a professional only product, but man, does it work. I am doing a fill with the Accents Trinity Hard Gel in the shade SW2. I really do love this hard gel and I think the color is absolutely stunning. So I'm using my gel brush and very lightly applying a thin slip layer along the entire nail plate and then I'll grab a bigger dollop of gel. Place that more toward the cuticle. Press it in very gently and start using kind of back and forth windshield wiper motions to build a little bit of strength, a little bit of an apex. And as I get to the tip of the nail, I'm making it kind of skinnier and skinnier because I want around the nail, the sidewalls and by the cuticles to be the thinnest and the very center of the enhancement to be the thickest. Always feel free to grab a skinny itty bitty detail liner brush. I could not do gel nails without one of these. Never hesitate to use a detail brush. You can really help kind of maneuver the gel around where you want it with one of these itty bitty little brushes. Lately I've been loving to use that kind of reflection of my light in the surface of the nail to see if there's any dips. You'll see kind of breaks in the light if there's dips in the nail. You can kind of see there on my other nails that aren't done yet that this is the length of my natural nail. My natural nails without builder on them could never, ever, ever be this long. They are so thin naturally, always have been, that if they grow past my, my finger, they just bend so much that it, it kind of hurts and they'll start to tear. So gel is a great, builder gel is a great way if you find a tech that you trust and that is you know e-file trained and knows what they're doing, Builder Gel is a great way to grow out those natural nails.
This right here is a really great example. Watch the reflection, how it is a really weird shape right now. And as it kind of starts to self level, you can see it turn into more of a circle because I have a little bit of a ring light right above my nail station. So that's kind of what I mean by using that line of light, that reflection in the gel to your advantage. All right, we are all done with the fill. I could totally be done here, but we're gonna add a little bit of fun stuff. We're gonna add a little bit of art. I did go ahead and finish file off camera. That's why they're kind of uh, matte now. I'm gonna apply a medium kind of layer of the ENL transfer foil gel. It's the best transfer foil gel that there is. I haven't used one that I like better. And I find that if you apply it too thin and if you apply it too thick, it just does not pack the same punch. So make sure that you're doing kind of like a nice medium layer. It's not too thick. You're not flooding the sidewalls, but it's not too incredibly thin either. I'm going to cure that for a full two minutes in my lamp. I find that gives me the best results when you cure it for a full two minutes in my LED. I use a Cocoa's LeBlanc lamp. It's my favorite lamp. Then I'm gonna grab my transfer foils. This is the fun part. So I'm using this nice rosy white lace. I think it's so pretty. And then I just kind of press down on the nail and I'll use the back of my tweezers to make sure it's laying really flat down on the nail. I found that transfer foils like this are kind of tricky when they're kind of just one color because it can be hard to tell whether or not you're laying it upside down. You can feel an ever so slight difference on either side of this transfer foil. There is a slight texture on one side and it's completely smooth on the other side. So that's the best tip I can give you. I've tried it before where I, I put it upside down and then wonder why it's not transferring. So you're gonna lay down the, the, if you can find the side with the texture, that's the side you're gonna lay down. So the smoothest side is gonna be facing up. I am going to file the free edge real quick. This is the best tip I can give you when it comes to transfer foils because they do have a habit of kind of lifting. So I'm just really gently filing that free edge to break up any of the transfer foil that wrapped around the edge of my nail. Make sure you dust it off really quick and then I'm gonna go ahead and top coat. I'm using the Cocoist non-staining top coat. It is such a good one. It's got a very thin viscosity though, so be very careful with it. Make sure you don't flood your skin, but that's everything. That is the final look. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss any future videos of mine, and I will see you guys next time. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Yeah, my